In 1957, William Rowe sworn in before William Clark, a commissioner for oaths in and for the province of Alberto, Canada. William Rowe's sworn affidavit consists of detailed information regarding a Bigfoot encounter he had. The sworn affidavit states, he had been working on the highway near Tête Jean Cachet for about two years. In October 1955, he decided to climb five miles up Micah Mountain to an old deserted mine. He came in sight of the mine around three o'clock in the afternoon. He had just come out of a patch of low brush into a clearing when he saw what he thought was a grizzly bear in the brush on the other side. He sat down on a rock and watched with his rifle in his hands. He could just see the top of the animal's head and the top of one shoulder. A moment later, it raised up and stepped out into the opening. He then saw that it was not a bear. The creature came across the clearing directly towards him. His first impression was of a huge man, about six feet tall, almost three feet wide, and probably weighing somewhere near 300 pounds. It was covered from head to foot with dark, brown silver tipped hair but as it came closer he saw by its breasts that it was a female its torso was not curved like a female's its broad frame was straight from shoulder to hip its arms were much thicker than a man's arm and longer reaching almost to its knees its feet were broader proportionately than a man's, about five inches wide at the front and tapering to much thinner heels. When it walked, it placed the heel of its foot down first and he could see the gray-brown skin or hide on the soles of its feet. It came to the edge of the bush he was hiding in, within 20 feet of him, and squatted down on its haunches. Reaching out its hands, it pulled the branches of bushes toward it and stripped the leaves with its teeth. Its lips curled flexibly around the leaves as it ate. He was close enough to see that its teeth were white and even. The shape of this creature's head was higher at the back than at the front. The nose was broad and flat. The lips and chin protruded farther than its nose, but the hair that covered it, leaving bare only the parts of the face around the mouth, nose, and ears, made it resemble an animal as much as a human. None of its hair, even on the back of its head, was longer than an inch, and that on its face was much shorter. Its ears were shaped like a human's ears, but its eyes were small and black like a bear's, and its neck was unhuman, thicker and shorter than any man he has ever seen. Finally, the wild thing must have got his scent, for it looked directly at him through an opening in the brush. A look of amazement crossed its face. It looked so comical at that moment, Roe had to grin. Still in a crouched position, it backed up three or four steps, then straightened up to its full height and started to walk rapidly back the way it had come. For a moment, it watched him over its shoulder as it went away, not exactly afraid, but as though it wanted no contact with anything strange. In addition to the information in his sworn statement, William Rowe made the following remarks regarding the Sasquatch in a letter to John Green. The nails were not like a bear's, 
but short and heavy like a man's fingernails are. Its eyes were not light and large, but small and black like a bear's. You couldn't see any knotted, corded muscles. This animal seemed almost round. It was as deep through as it was wide, and I believe if this animal should have been seven feet tall, it would have weighed close to 500 pounds. We've got to get away from the idea of comparing it to a human being as we know them. Don't forget to watch, like, and share Bigfoot in the Forest on all your social media. And don't forget, Bigfoot's on Itzy. YouTube.